Welcome. This video talks about combining data sets in SATs very briefly. We'll talk about two basic cases where we would have two data sets and we might want to combine them. There are, of course, going to be many, many different cases that you would, could consider. The first one that we'll talk about is an easy case where um, you basically have two different sets, two different uh, data sets with different variables measured on the same exact individuals. And basically for every observation in one data set, we have an observation in another data set. So here would be a very brief example. You can see that we have the same three observations in both data sets, but what we have is different variables measured on those observations. But again, we need to be careful that this observation truly is going to match up with this observation over here. So there's some relationship to them in real life or, or whatever this data set's context is. And basically what we want to do is combine these two data sets um, next, as, as you might think about column binding them, putting them next to each other um, horizontally. And this would be called a one-to-one -one merge in this case. So that's one case that, we, that we're going to look at here. And the other case is sort of the opposite. It's going to be like a vertical joining. Um, and this is where we have the same variables measured on different observations in two data sets. And so we might have, um, again, the idea that we have three data sets here on variable one, or sorry, three observations here on variable one and variable two. And then we have two observations here on variable one and variable two. And so what we want to do is just combine, we want to concatenate that second data set to the bottom of the first data set. And so we're going to look at these two very basic ways of joining data sets in SAS. All right, let's start with that one-to-one -one merge where we want to join things horizontally. Uh, we're going to have a data set NCSU first up here and NCSU second. And what we want to do is create a data set called NCSU merged that's going to combine those two together. How do we do that? Well, in a data step, we can do this by utilizing the merge statement. So this merge statement is just going to take two data sets and combine them horizontally in a one-to-one -one fashion. So we really do need to have, for every observation in the first data set, a corresponding observation in the second data set that we want to join. And that's really all we have to do for this very basic case. Here's just an example of doing that. So again, we have three observations on two variables for the first data set. And so I've just used in-stream data to create that over here. So this data set corresponds to this guy. And then I've created another data set that's going to, again, have three observations, but have a different variable being measured. But we're going to have the idea that, again, these two line up, these two line up, and these two line up. So there's some association between these two data sets and their observation. So if we want to combine those, all we need to do is run a data step. We're going to create a new data set, new data set called NCSU merged. We're going to use that merge statement to put those two together. That's all there is to this very special, very easy case. Now, um, I don't want you to think that you just have to straight merge these two things together. Of course, there's going to be some different cases where maybe you have um, a corresponding variable in each data set that represents the same exact thing. And maybe we want to combine them, but rename and drop some of these variables or something like that. Well, we can do that kind of thing by using our data set options on our merge statement. So for instance, um, here on this NCSU first, I'm, I'm adding a data set option that's going to rename variable one and variable two. And then notice that I'm closing that parenthesis here. Then I'm on my second data set, ncsu.second, I'm going to rename those as well and drop one of the variables. So here I'm going to rename variable three to be trait, and I'm going to drop that variable four since it's redundant with variable one. So we can utilize a lot of these different data set options that we talked about previously. Let's just look at how that would look if we did the same thing. So I'm going to create a new data set, NCSU second, that's just got that extra variable in it. But otherwise, N NCSU first is the exact same thing. We're going to use that merge with the renames and the drop statement. And now we get a new data set down here that looks a lot nicer that has horizontally joined these two together while also changing some names. Again, this is just kind of one easy case where you might be combining data sets. The other easy case that we're going to talk about is concatenating data sets or joining them um, vertically. And so this is, again, the case where we have the same variables just on different observations split between two data sets. And a quick example here, I have NCSU top being the top part of the data set, NCSU bottom being the bottom part, and I just want to, to join those things vertically. This can be done by just utilizing multiple um, data sets on your set statement itself. So remember, the set statement, its purpose is to copy a data set. Well, if I do set and then put two data sets, it's going to copy those um, and try to join them vertically. 
So just again, to give you another example, I'm creating one data set using, I'm actually just copying the NCSU first data set and calling it NCSU top to match our previous example. And then we're creating a second data set called NCSU bottom that will just be two more observations on those same two variables. I'm going to use my set statement with two data sets, and that's just going to vertically join those or concatenate them together. Again, we could utilize data set options when we're using this set statement as well. Again, these are really only these are really just two cases that are really easy. There are tons and tons of different special cases, um, a mini to one merge. So if you have multiple values from this data set that correspond to one value in this data set, how do you combine those? There are lots and lots of different cases that you might want to consider. And so there is an article here from SAS that will give you lots of good resources for um, figuring out what kind of join you're doing and how to do that. And there are different procedures and things that you can use along the way as well. Proc append is really useful. The data step we've seen, it can be um, utilized as well to do these different, di more difficult types of merges. And then proc SQL is always out there as a great way to handle and manipulate your data. All right, let's go into SAS and check out um, combining two data sets. And here we are in SAS, ready to go. Uh, we have two files, two raw data files in our shared folder called mosquito.txt and mosquito2.txt. These are the two that we're going to read in and try to combine. If I double click on mosquito.txt, uh, we can open that in the viewer here and we see that there appear to be data value entries that are separated by an ampersand. This would be an ampersand delimited file. And then mosquito2, if we double click on that, hmm, okay, this looks like it has tabs separating the values, but notice that there are no um, column names up there. So we're gonna have to read that in as well. Let's go ahead and get those. So we'll read in our first data set. We we'll use proc import, specify the data file, the physical path to say mosquito.txt. Easiest way to get at that, right click on mosquito.txt properties. And then we can highlight this location, possibly. There we go. Copy that. And we put that in a quoted string here. Remember that your numbers here are going to differ from my numbers based off of your account. We got to give it our database management system. Here we're going to use DLM because this is not a common delimiter. This is an ampersand delimited file. And then we'll output that to our NCSU library as mosq1. Uh, get name should be yes because uh, this does have the data, the column names there. And then since we use the DLM option, we need to specify the delimiter, and that'll be an ampersand sign. We'll hit run on that, and I'll be good to go. Let's just go ahead and get the second data set ready to go before we run this. So I'll just copy this because we're going to use another proc import statement. And we'll do our second data set. The path to the file is going to be exactly the same, except it's mosquito2.txt instead of mosquito. Um, since this is a tab separated file, you might think I could use a TSV here, but the file extension is not TSV, so that causes some issues here. So we'll still use the DLM option here and specify what the tab is. Um, and then we'll change this output data set to mosq2. Git name should be no, since there are no column names in the file. And again, we're gonna change our delimiter uh, 09x, 09 in quotes, and then x is the actual um, way to say that you wanna use a tab as your um, particular delimiter. So that's a little bit weird. But if we run these two things here, we should now have two data sets that we're gonna be wanting to join. All right, here's mosq, we'll always check our log first. Uh, it looks okay. I don't see any red, any green. So let's look at our output data set. Mosk1 has 37 rows on four columns, day, cage, treatment, and response. Let's go to Mosk2. So this looks like day, cage, treatment, and response. So that's good. Um, and there's 30 rows here. So in total, we'll end up with 67 if we do this right. Let's go ahead and try to join these two things vertically using a data statement. So we'll use a data step. So we'll create a new data set, uh, ncsu.mosk. Uh, I'll just call it mosk regular. We're going to set both of these two data sets. So we'll do ncsu mosk1 and then ncsu mosk2. Remember, what we're trying to do is vertically join these things. We'll see if this works. And you might think that, well, since these things were, you know, sort of lined up perfectly, that it should just work like that. But SAS is actually going to try to join these things based off of the variable names. And so we can see that the variables were named differently here. And so we are filling in with periods here. Remember, periods are missing values 
for um, numeric variables, and then in this column we have spaces, which are the missing values for character. And so this did not read incorrectly, right? It put this over here because we had different variable names. It did not join them correctly. So let's go ahead and try to fix that. Um, we know that we can change variable names whenever we copy them over. And so here we can do uh, a rename data set option. Let's make sure we have the variable names up over here so that we can easily look at them. So we have mosk2 that we want to be looking at. There are four variables. And we should open up mosk1 so we know what they should look like. And remember, if we rename, we do rename equal. And we put our renames within this parenthesis. So var1, we're going to rename that to cage. I think that's the first one. Var2, that's going to be day. Let me make sure that those are in the right order. Let's see, we got, oh, maybe it's day cage treatment then response. OK, so we need to fix that. We got day first, cage second. Var3 is treatment. And then var4, oh, I got to spell that. There. I got to name this exactly the same. So TRT, and then var4 should be response. All right, let's just make sure day cage treatment response. Does that look great? Day cage treatment response. That looks like day cage treatment and response. All right. Hopefully this will rename our variables appropriately prior to copying over. And then when we go to set them together, it's going to vertically concatenate them the correct way. Go running man. Always check our log. Hmm, looks okay. We had 37 and 30 observations in total 67. That's good. Now, did it do it right? Ah, it does appear to have done it right. We have our days going now 1 to 30 and so on. Just a nice example of doing a very basic concatenation in SAS. All right, let's wrap up this section. Uh, so this entire module is now finished. We now know how to do very basic data manipulation steps. So when we're talking about going through this whole process of starting with raw data, ending with an analysis, we are now pretty much ready to start that summarization step. We know how to get our, our nicely formatted data in, and we know how to create new variables, subset our data, and be ready to go. So this is great news.